she could have been the most powerful woman in all history but she ended up with nothing allow me to tell you about david's first wife her name was michael or mika <laughs> from whatever group of schools you're from this woman is so strong but i feel like she was buried in her bitterness that she missed the most important time of her life this lady was married thrice yes you had me right thrice twice but the most powerful man in all israel king david the person who will kill goliath was promised to be married to a daughter of a king king saul but saul was like hmm this man has no class who is he he instead brought him into his kingdom gave him a battalion instead of giving this man my daughter let me send him to the army and get killed so he told david go and kill philistines and bring me the four skins of these men i don't know whether he removed the four skins of these men while they were alive or dead but he brought 200 four skins as dowry but guess what he did not quite enjoy marriage with her because King Saul still wanted to kill David. So Mika, after God married to David, helped David to escape where he went to the wilderness and he got his own army. Well, it's true King David married two other women before he came back and King Saul died and now he became the king. And when David ran away, King Saul married this daughter to another man. So she got married the second time. But when King David came back now as a king, he asked, and where could be my trophy wife be? Hmm? This wife that I brought 204 skins of the Philistines. And she was already married. He went for her and married her for the second time. All right. Now, the Bible tells us that when the Ark of Covenant was taken and David managed to bring it back to Jerusalem, he danced until his outfit came out. The Bible says that in her heart she despised King David. And then she asked him, what kind of a king are you who would dance naked even before servants? Of course, he said, I will dance for my God. The Bible says that Mika died barren. That is such a sad way for her to die. Considering her whole family had been killed. So she was the only bloodline to King Saul's lineage. Let me talk to Mika today. Mika, I know you have gone through a lot. I know life has given you a bitter fruit to chew on. Marriage to a man who has no class. Then this man suddenly comes back to you with two wives. And now he has to take you from a man you have been married to for some time and make you his wife. I know you are angry that nobody cares about your feelings. Please look at this glass half full, not half empty. You are the first queen of a whole kingdom. Mika, you are the young child of Saul. There was no way you would have been the queen of this country. But through this man, you are going to reign with him. Please don't despise him. Can't you see the Lord has been fighting for him? And that's why he has gotten this kingdom. When he's dancing for his God, instead of looking down on him, encourage him. Let your heart not be troubled. Yes, you have the right to feel like you are bitter. You have the right to feel you hate this person. But please, Mika, not every right should be exercised because it will mean shooting yourself in the foot. I want you to prosper, Mika. This must be your ear. So please sit on that queenly chair and say, this is my kingdom and let it work for you. You can't change the past. So why don't you do something positive about your future? Hmm? Let's change this narrative. Because you are meant for great. A story is told of a father who was very worried because he was seated next to his son in a hospital ward. The son was very, very ill. And the only treatment that he could have had was an emergency surgery. And the only doctor could have done it was only one doctor in the whole country. So this one doctor was very sought after. 
and this family had secured a slot in his schedule and they were eagerly waiting for the son to go to surgery and as they were waiting the nurse came and said unfortunately the doctor is a bit late we ask that you please wait he is on his way coming and they waited and they waited one hour two hours and the father we all know men fear manifests as anger in them because they don't want to show any weakness how are you man so he was getting agitated as the time went by he kept on looking at the watch he kept on looking how the son is suffering and he felt really really angry finally the doctor came and the father couldn't hide his anger towards this doctor and he went rushing to him and said how dare you keep us waiting we are paying you enough for you to come and do this work hmm? don't you know that this is my only son and we need this surgery what would you say if my son died and the doctor said i am sorry that i am late i will make sure that your son gets well please come down he said yeah it better happen and they took the son they went to the theater and all was done he helped the son he didn't die and his problem was reversed the nurse is the one who came to tell them the son is out of theater you can go see him they wondered why the doctor didn't come the father asked the nurse so where is the doctor we would want to thank him and they said oh unfortunately the doctor had to rush out say oh okay here's another surgery he said no today is his son's burial so he first went to the mortuary prepared everyone and then he came, did the surgery, and now he's going back to the friends and family. When your son was in the surgery, that is when the ceremony of his burial was happening. So that's why he's not here. The son of the doctor had actually died. Where am I going with this, Helen? Please, this tongue that makes you feel entitled to something and makes you feel like you have the right to complain, Please let it go down this year. You are there telling God, you don't do this for me. I have done this. I've waited for you this time. Why are you not doing this? Why are you not doing that? You don't even care about me. How can you even say that? He actually gave his only son to die for you. Where do you get the guts to say God doesn't care about you? And you know, we complain without not even knowing the whole story. Why don't you ask God or ask anybody who has made you wait for something? Why? Why am I forced to wait for this long? My big brother always tells me, give everyone, including God, the benefit of doubt. Stop thinking that you can always have your way. Please, this bitterness and anger and this fear in you, don't be controlled by these emotions because they are like smoke or they are like dust. Once they come down and you get back to your senses, I kid you not, you will regret every word you said in anger, in fear. So please, my brothers and sisters, mm, let those emotions calm down. Because what you get out of your mouth when those emotions are high, you cannot take it back 